What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another run here in American Truck Simulator. Still with the 389, but I've got Electric G back on. Polly has been uploading a lot of his mods, a lot of his skins, and some of them are new, some of them he's already had up there before, so I've already told you guys that. Lucasi is doing the same thing, which is awesome. It's good to hear. It's good to see. You know, they do great work, so if, if you guys haven't, be sure to check those guys out, Polly and Lucasi and the Steam Workshop. You're not going to find their stuff anywhere else. If you do, don't touch it. It's probably not good. So, did some changes here to the 389. Just kind of changed things up because no other trucks yet are really getting me going here. Damn train. No other trucks are really getting me interested in what to use. So, Real quick run down here what I've done to the 389. I put the bigger cab on there, the bigger sleeper, changed the tank, and now it's bigger as well as all, all painted except for the chrome straps. I put the plate back there and I put some LEDs on that one. Uh, I've also made the, the frame longer. This is the long version of it, so it's going to be a pain in the ass to get around corners, especially when I'm hauling a 53 foot trailer like the new Wabash 2.0. This is from Bart. It's his new Wabash 2.0 setup for um, ATS here. I'm having some issues with the traffic part of the mod, so I've just deleted that one. But the rest of it works just fine from what I can tell. It does add a few more reefers, and I'm a little... I don't think I've ever noticed a Target reefer trailer. So, that's going to be a little different. But, you know, it, it all looks good. It all works great. Although, I don't think it's advanced coupling set. I don't know if it's an issue between a truck or a trailer or both. But when I backed into it, I had to go in nice and slow because it doesn't automatically couple up like you do with a stock SCS truck on a trailer. It doesn't seem to hit the fifth wheel and it won't move the truck or anything. You have to be within proximity, nice and slow, and then eventually a hook up. So, don't know what, what caused that, but uh, it works. That's all I care about. I can hook up to it. So, that is the setup here for today with the truck and trailer. Today I am in Kingman and I'm heading down to Yuma to Walmart. I'm at Costco right now. So, all in a load of plastics, tipping the scale at 33,600 pounds. Good on fuel. I've got to take a nap at thir in 13 hours. I've got 16 to do the job and GPS puts me there at just oh, under 10. So, how about I shut up? get on the road and then I can discuss the recent news that came out a couple days ago.
still waiting on a SKS shifter. Push the wrong button here and you wind up in a different different range of gears. Also made another change on the inside here. As you can see, I got the carbon fiber dash. I thought that might be a little different. I kind of liked the way the metal as well as the black wood looked, but uh, went with the carbon fiber dash. So, the news that came out a couple, couple days ago, it's actually posted on the 20th, and I happened to come across this while just going around different uh, news areas, and Elon Musk, for those who don't know, he is the man that owns Tesla. That's his company. He started it up. It's the electric car company. And I think pretty much the only one that's left. Uh, Fisker, I think, is gone. So, he he's basically what many are saying in over his head with his Model 3, which is supposed to be an all-electric economical car. They sold... They, they haven't even started building the damn thing yet, and they've already sold thousands of units. I think the car is supposed to be thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars or something, and he's back in the news because he's going over part two of his future plan. Uh, he he set out ten years ago or so, maybe a little less, with a plan on what he wanted to do with his company, and for the most part, he's achieved all those goals. He started with a a very low number production or low volume production supercar basically and then from there he went on to a mid-ranged uh, uh, I would say luxury car so your Lexus, your Beamers, your Mercedes, things like that and that did very well and the earnings from both of those are now going into making this new uh, everyman car, average family car, that's going to be in the mid-30s or so, but now he's in the news because what he plans to do next, and that's go into other markets, not just home uh, power generation with solar panels, he does his dream envisions seeing homes across the United States, and if not, you know, the world, with his solar panel set up on their roofs. Roofs, basically nothing but solar panels. And admirable as that is, that's not exactly what he's in the news for. I mean, people have had that dream for a long time. But what he's in the news for is what he plans to roll out next with on his... Damn, wrong one again. Uh his conquest to make an all-electric fleet. That's buses and semis. And we're not talking little guys. We're talking big guys like this. He wants to make all-electric trucks. Now, I don't think that's really been... I mean, I've heard of hybrids. I've never seen one before. But a, And, of course, we've seen hybrid buses in the cities. I'm pretty sure there's an all-electric bus out there. I haven't seen one. I know the city of Chicago has had hybrids. But uh, and I think the suburban company, Pace, they've got hybrids as well. Or they did, anyway. And, of course, with the trucking industry, there's already the natural gas. And there's two versions of that one. So, you know, no diesel whatsoever. It's all natural gas, compressed natural gas most of the time. So, now it's going, he's going for electric. So, it kind of begs the question, can a over-the-road truck Can a over-the-road truck be electric? And I, quite honestly, I don't think so. I mean, how would you even go about setting something like that up? 
it doesn't matter if it's a local straight truck or even, you know, something like a UPS delivery truck. That's still a great amount of power that's going to be needed to last the amount of time that these vehicles do. I mean, hell, alone, UPS and FedEx delivery trucks, they're up and moving at 7, 6, or 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, and they're not getting back until, you know, late in the evening on some of these trucks. That's a long time for a battery to go. I mean, has battery technology come along that much? I mean, I know there's lipos and lipolys and things like that. Some of the same technology that you will find in the cars, you will find in the RC world. I was never much of an, a, a battery guy with RC racing and RC cars, although I have kind of dipped into a little bit with my RC planes and helicopters. But I've been more of a nitro guy. I raced nitro RC cars. And from the little I do know about the electric side, uh, that's going to take a whole hell of a lot of batteries to power this truck. Add to that the amount of weight that the truck is going to be adding on, and it makes me wonder if it's at all possible. I mean, the battery weight alone is going to be immense. And I can't really think of anything that Musk, or anyone else for that matter, could do to lighten the trucks up enough to still make them viable, to make it worthwhile to drive on the road without being overweight. I mean, if you're adding 10,000 pounds or even 5,000 pounds of batteries to a truck, well, you're not adding, even if you take off the fuel tanks and all the fuel lines and then you subtract how much fuel you're going to be normally adding to it, you're still not going to come up to 5,000 pounds. Take out the motor and all the DEF stuff and whatnot, okay, you're getting close, but now you're going to lose some of what you just gained because you got to put the motor and the transmission in for the new setup. So, that would, to me, that's my main concern. If I'm a trucking company and I'm hearing this guy talk about this stuff, that's going to mean that to stay under the federal weight limits that are governing all the roads across the United States, I'm going to have to haul less. That means I'm going to have to buy more trucks to, to haul what the customer says they have to haul, what they have to ship, what they have to receive. Now, if I'm a business owner, I'm also, I'm also looking at the cost of said trucks. How am I going to be able to charge, say for example, this 389 down the road is all electric. I mean, I don't know what Tesla's version is going to be called, but, you know, say this one's all electric. How do I charge that? I mean, of course, there's probably going to be charging stations at truck stops. So, when I park for the night, there's a charging station. Obviously, that's not going to be free. I don't see any truck stop offering that for free, especially when, you know, they're, whole, they're parking 50, 60, even 100 trucks, you know, depending on the size of the truck stop. And if you've got even 30 of them charging up overnight, that's a lot of juice that those guys are sucking down. So, you know, what's the energy costs for that going to be compared to diesel costs? You know, that he, he talks about all this stuff, but I really have to wonder if he's even thought about any of it, if he's thought any of it through. Even if it's a local straight truck like I used to drive. Whether it's a single axle or a tandem axle, whether it's hauling just 20,000 pounds or if it's hauling 50,000 pounds. It's... that's still a quite a bit of 
of a, of a requirement, not just for power, but for, you know, power for, uh, you know, the torque and the horsepower to move, but the energy requirement alone is going to be a massive. And then once again, you run into weight limits, vehicle size limits, things like that. So that's going to be really, really interesting to see. I mean, buses on one hand, I can understand. But, yeah, for, for the trucking industry, that one just kind of... That, that's puzzling me how one would pull that off. I mean, I always thought the, the natural gas ones were iffy as well because it's not like natural gas is available at every truck stop across the United States. So someone going from Chicago to, you know, Houston, Texas, they're either A, not going to be able to make the trip because there's not enough of the natural gas fuel stops or they're just going to have to plan they're going to have to plan their route accordingly so they can make it from point A to point B to point C and so on fueling up every way he goes see trucks getting or trailers getting solar panels put on the roofs that's one thing I can see I mean that isn't going to be nowhere near enough to recuperate the loss of energy that the batteries are going to expel but something is better than nothing right that will be put on vehicles like that for the trucking industry. Now I'm sure Volvo Peterbilt, Kenworth, or Packard for those two. I'm sure it's all been looked at. I wouldn't be surprised if there's prototypes on their proving grounds, on their testing grounds. But, yeah, I just personally don't see how that's going to work. On a car, that's one thing, but still, they're limited on their mileage. How far they can go between charges. And I don't think the Teslas are like the Fiskers. The Fiskers had a 2.0 liter diesel underneath the front hood. So when the battery went low or the battery went dry, you could still limp your way to somewhere to recharge. I don't believe Teslas have that option. steady line of traffic.
what do you guys think about that? Is that something? Is that the way of the future? Or are we stuck using diesel? Or are we going to go to compressed natural gas? You know, other alternatives like that. Even propane, for example. I mean, propane is used. It's used in Schwann ice home ice cream home delivery, or I don't think they do just ice cream. They do other things, but uh, frozen home delivery stuff. Their trucks are all propane, and have been for years. So is that more the way of the future? Or is it going to be electric? Is electric the way it's going to be? And big diesel sucking black smoke driving trucks like this 389 or its older brother, the 379. Those are going to be home here to stay for a while. And the van just disappeared. What the hell is causing that? The van just freaking disappeared. That's a tough one. I mean, it, it, we're still years and years from that really affecting anything. I mean, hell, our kids might be, uh, might be our age, if not older, before uh, innovations like that really, be, you know, become mainstream enough to affect what we used to know as normal. I'm guessing that's Walmart right around the corner. I downloaded a dispatcher mod, which puts these cones in place rather than the flashing box and the beacon above it. A little interesting. Different. Nope, I'm going to straighten this one up before I say okay. Parked, done, excellent. So, there you have it, guys. We'll have to wait and see another 10, 15, 20 years. Well, actually, Elon Musk's plan calls it to happen within 10 years, so we should at least see a truck out within that time. We'll see how it all turns out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next run. Take it easy.